Hello and welcome back to Manifolds, the video series where we do analysis on generalized surfaces. Indeed, we get closer and closer to the topic of integration because in today's part 27 we will talk about so-called alternating k-forms. In the end, we will define differential forms and then we can integrate them on a smooth manifold. However, first we have to talk about some multilinear algebra. But before we start with that, I really want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube, on Patreon or by other means. And please don't forget, you can download additional material with the link in the description. For example, I have printable PDF versions for the videos in this series. Okay, then I would say, let's start with a quick recap of the tangent space of a smooth manifold. In particular, every time we write m, we mean a differentiable manifold. Therefore, the tangent space at a given point p always exists. And the name for the tangent space is always tpm. And now if m is an n-dimensional manifold, the tangent space is an n-dimensional vector space. And of course, this immediately explains why linear algebra comes into the game. In fact, vector spaces are now the important objects of this video. And moreover, for every vector space, we can also define the dual space with a star. And moreover, in order to make the notation shorter, usually the star is pushed to the t instead of behind the whole vector space. So it exactly means the same thing, namely the dual space. And in the case you have never heard of the dual space at all, I give you the definition here. Now, it's given by the set of all linear maps and maybe we call them alpha. And the linear maps are defined on the vector space we consider, which is here tpm, and they map into the corresponding field, which is given by r in our case. So in short, you just say the dual space is given by the set of the linear functionals. And functional here just means that the codomain of the linear map is just given by the very simple vector space r. And now if you remember, in the last video we already considered such a linear functional. Namely, we called it dxj. Okay, and if we want to be more precise with this object, we also have to put the point p into the name. And then you should know this gives us a linear map from tpm into the real number line r. More precisely, you should recall that we can use the coordinate basis of tpm for the definition of dxj. In fact, just put del k as a tangent vector into the map, and then by definition the result should be the Kronecker delta. Hence, we know what happens to all the basis vectors, and therefore we can extend this definition to a linear map. And here I can already tell you, such a linear map here we call a one form. In fact, we will put meaning to the word differential form for a manifold. In general, this will be just a map we can call omega defined on the manifold m, such that the value omega of p is a special linear map. So for example, we could say it's an element of tp star m. And there you might already know, this is the special case we call just a one form. And now we already know one example, namely dxj. And now you have to see it as a map defined on the manifold. This means each point p is sent to the linear map from before. And from this one we already know it's an element of tp star m. Okay, so now you already know what a one form is, it's just a map that gives for each point on M a linear map. And now, in order to define so-called two forms, or generally speaking k forms, we need to do some multilinear algebra. Simply because we want to extend this output there from linear maps to so-called multilinear maps. However, we can already look at a special subset and we call this old k. And this one we define for every vector space v. And you already know, in the end we will choose tpm for v. Okay, so what is the definition of this set here? 
Again, it's a set of maps and we call them alpha again. However, now the domain is given by the Cartesian product of the vector spaces V. And in fact, there comes the K in because we have K of them here. On the other hand, the codomain of alpha is still the same. We still map into the real number line. Okay, and now the important property this map alpha should have is that it is multilinear. In short, we would also say it's a K linear map because we have exactly K inputs for the Cartesian product here. And now the definition of this term is not complicated at all. It just means that if you fix all the inputs with the exception of one, then you have a linear map from V into R. And this should work no matter which input is the free one. So we see we have a linear map K times and therefore we call it K linear. So for example, a common inner product for vector space V is a two linear map. And usually we would just call it a bilinear map. Okay, but that's not all because we also have the alternating part here. And there I can say alternating is a property you might have already seen from the determinant in linear algebra. In short, you can define it by saying if the input is linearly dependent, then the output is zero. More precisely, if you have k vectors from the vector space, you put them into our map alpha, and this is zero if the k vectors form a linearly dependent set. Now, if you have never seen this definition, maybe it looks a little bit strange, but in the end, it's exactly what we need here for differential forms. And maybe let's quickly look at an example for a bilinear form that is alternating. So this means our alpha now comes from alt2. And now maybe you should immediately note that from the alternating property we get the following. If we exchange exactly two vectors in the map alpha, then nothing really changes except for the sign in front. So there you see it, alternating just means that we have to add a minus sign if we exchange two vectors. And therefore, you should immediately see that the determinant map on R2 is an example here. However, it's by far not the only example, so please remember that. Still, it's a very good example and we will use it later on when we integrate on manifolds again. Okay, so now it's a common thing that usually one calls such an alpha here also a K form. But in order to make it not too confusing, here I will call it an alternating K form on V. So we emphasize the alternating and the on V to make clear this is the multilinear algebra definition of a K form. Hence, at this point, you already know alternating one forms on V. Indeed, we talked about these before. These are given by the dual space. Hence, alt1 V is nothing else than V star. So this is the dual space of V as we have defined it before. In other words, for one forms, the alternating part is not seen at all. And in that sense, we can also define zero forms and define the whole set here. In fact, this is just a useful convention to make some formulas nicer later. And we just define it as the real number line, so it's a set of scalars from the vector space V. Okay, so I think this is a good enough introduction into the field of alternating K forms. And in the next video, we will go deeper into this field and we will also define the important wedge product for alternating K forms. So I really hope we meet again and have a nice day. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.